My name is Mrs. Mary Nasiru. Mrs. Mary Nasiru. Which state are you from? Kogi State. Which language will you be? Igala. From which village? From Igala Mela Odoru local government. Okay. Your late husband, which language MB? Basange. From which state? Kogi State. From which village? From Icheu, by the state in the Kina. Okay. I don't know whether you listened to our program yesterday. Yes, I did, sir. First of all, these children will come yesterday. You know, say they go come, bracket a family. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now you give them the go ahead to come to break the family. Yes, sir. So they no just come on their own. No, sir. Waiting to make you get confidence. Say they go come, make me they come break the family. Be I made them or ask them to come because I knew that here we will get justice. Okay. When I don't try other places where when I not get justice. No, sir. I used to follow the program. So, so I know you've there, been handling cases so like there this. there is no point going elsewhere. Yes, sir. You have absolute trust and confidence that we, you will get justice here. Yes, sir. Tell us your own side of the story, ma. Good morning, my ordinary president and Brekete family. Good morning, ma. Um, in, on January 17th, 2023, yeah. my dad passed on. Okay. And the following day on the 18th, I traveled down to Ida, where my family are staying. And we stayed in the house, did our own family meeting, made arrangements on how we are going to bury my dad. And I met my husband in my father's house on the 18th that I went. So after my father's children, we did, we did our meeting and agreed on the date that we are going to bury my dad. I was giving him feedback how we were going and how we arrived at the date with the church and now returned back to Abuja to do preparation for the burial. Before I left Abuja, I left Abuja for the burial on 5th of February, 2023. And it was on a Sunday, on a Sunday afternoon that I left. I left him behind, and he told me that he will join me on the 6th or on the 7th. So when I went, I called him that I've arrived home, and all other things that we're supposed to be doing, we did. And on the 7th, he left Abuja to Lokoja. And when he was going to Lokoja, he picked one of my friends and dropped that one in a, this, the road, one junction to Ida, before you can proceed to Ayanwa. Mm -hmm. And then he and Baba Abu proceeded to somewhere. Mm -hmm. They did not disclose to us. So on the eighth- Your husband did not tell you where, where they After they dropped my friend yes. at that junction, mm -hmm. he proceeded with Baba Abu to where I don't know. He did not disclose to us, even my friend that he picked. Mm -hmm. So on the eighth, in the evening, he now came down with Bababu and one Alaji Hassan. The three of them used to stay together. So when they came, I my my younger ones we welcomed them and then they served them food, and they did not eat. They said I should pa they should package the food for them. They want to carry it to the hotel where they lodge to eat, mm -hmm. and that was how they did the packaging for them. Uh, and they left. So the following day was the wake keep of my dad. They did not come on time. So they, and when it was time for us to go to mortuary to bring the corpse, I went. So on our way back home, I was where I met them with some other group of friends and his family members that came for the barrier. So we did the wake keep, and during the wake keep, he he was he held me, he was dancing, every other person was dancing before he was tired, he said he was going to his hotel room to sleep. That's your husband. That was my husband. And so early in the morning around five, 
I went to the hotel room where he was staying to tell him what uh, the tradition, what they were expecting him and all of us that are married to do. So we now arrived on what to do in that hotel, and I left. And in that hotel, I met him and the Alaji Hassan. They were in the same room. Who is Alaji Hassan? He, one of their friends again. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So he, the, the next time we could meet was in the church, where we now brought the cops for the funeral service. And after then, after they lowered my dad, and I, I was even asking them where they were staying, that they should serve them. They should hold on, face other people first. So, and now when they lowered my dad, I went inside my room. I was there crying. And later on, when the family gathered to do the, the, the meeting they used to do, and they said, where is he? And I called him. He came and joined them because I was not with them there. And they discussed whatever they were discussing. And I met me in the room again and said he's going to Lokoja. That one of the persons that he came with is not too fine. So instead of allowing that man to go by public transport, let him go and drop him. I said, okay, it's okay by me. You can go. And that was how he left. So the following morning, he called me. No, I don't, either he called me or I called him. I said, he's fine. I said, okay. So later on, I tried to call him again. He did not pick his call. Then on Sunday, I tried. He did not pick. Monday, I tried. He did not pick. It was Tuesday evening. The nun called me at about 4. Friday, his uh, late sister's son. The uncle is not feeling fine. Oh. Mm -hmm. I said, what? When? He said, since three days ago. And you did not call me since that time. You are calling me now. He offed the phone. Uh -uh. And then he, I now called the man gave him phone. What is wrong? He said, headache and malaria. Since when? He said, three days ago. And you did not call me. Why are you doing like this? Why you no call him too? I called. They were not picking the call, sir. Okay. So why are you doing like this? He said, no. I said, this boy cannot call me. He said, yes, he's the only person with him that is doing the running around. I said, even that, he's supposed to call me. It will not take him anything to tell me. I said, okay. By that fall, I won't be able to start coming over to uh, Lokoja. So first thing tomorrow morning, which is Wednesday, that I was going to meet him. Where are you? He said in a private hospital. So early in the morning on that Wednesday, I called him. How are you feeling? How is your health now? He said, it's getting better. That is only the headache. I said, okay, I am coming. He said, no, that he wants to transfer back to Abuja, where he may have a... Uh, good hands that we treat him. I said, okay. So that was the last thing I, the last time I spoke with my husband. So every other call I was making after that, the phone were actually ringing, but no response. Nobody was speaking. N nobody was speaking. And if I learned the phones were with his elder brother or this Friday, none of them picked the call. So I had to call Baba Abu that please, my husband talked to me that he's not feeling fine. And I've been calling after then, they are not picking my calls. Can you please help me drive to Lokoja and pick him to bring him to Abuja so that I am I'm going to be on my way now? And he said, yes, they have called him that they are coming already. I said, okay. So anything I want to hear after that was him I was calling because mm. if I call his line, they will not pick. Mm. So until they got to Abuja, he told me they are in Abuja now. I said, okay, what of the clinic? They said they are going. He said they are already gone to the clinic. They wrote drugs for them. They are already in the house, this and that. I said, okay. So every other thing I want to hear concerning him is him, Baba Abu, I'll be calling and he'll be telling me. So. When they buried my dad, it was not even up to seven days already. And as the first child, the female, I was supposed to stay in the house not less than seven days or at most two weeks in the, my father's compound. So I had to talk to my uncles that this is my predicament for mm. now, that I will be going. My husband is not feeling fine. And they asked me to go. And that was how Thursday morning, as early as 6 a.m., I left Ida. And by 11, I was in Abuja. And when I came, I saw him lying down with pains. And how far? He, he told me they have gone to the hospital. They Which gave, hospital? NMPC hospital. Mm -hmm. They gave him drugs. 
and they asked him to come back mm -hmm. um, the, on 21st to see a consultant. But within me, I was not satisfied with what they gave him because it was cafe gut. Mm. And the kind of headache he's complaining is not cafe gut headache. So he now said I should wait, let him take this drug for two or three days. If there is no improvement, we can go. So all through the weekend, there was no improvement. So on Monday, I had to force him, let's go back, even though it was not up till the day they gave him to mm. come back. So we now went on that Monday. As we were going on Monday, uh, Abu Baba came to meet us in the house. My younger brother was there. I asked him to drive us. And our tenant also was there. Then we all entered the car and went. And we now saw the doctor, which then the report they gave him from local the doctor saw it and said, no. On the report, it was written emergency. So why are they keeping this man since last week till now? Mm. That if anything had happened to him, that they would be liable, mm. held responsible. Mm. So the doctor started making moves for them to attend to him because the, 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 the test they asked him to do before they referred him was MRI mm. of the brain and CT, uh, CT brain scan. So... He, she did all she could, and they did that test. So, but according to the reporter of the of the test, that 25 minutes into the test, he shook his head. So the result will not be uh, viable or good for mm -hmm. them to use that. There must be a repeat the following day again. So that was how. Even that very day, the way he was. I was thinking. In fact, he was kept in an emergency uh, room. Mm. So I have to leave. My husband with our tenant, I can't remember whether Bababa was still with us then. Then I left them. I said, okay, maybe they will hold him there because of his situation. So let me quickly run down to Kuje, bring some of his clothing and food that he will eat. That was how I went down to Kuje, brought food and some of his clothing. But unfortunately, they asked us to go and come back the following day, and we all returned back. So when we were going back the following day to do all these tests, we did all the tests, and we were finally, all of us were just going around because nobody was really talking to us. We are busy asking them this, that, that, that. So finally... Who wasn't talking to you? The, the hospital, like the nurses, the doctors. Okay. Uh -huh. So finally, <clears throat> we, the nun told me, the, the surgeon there, that they want to refer him to Gerki Hospital where he will be managed properly. So I said, okay. We now went from the NNPC Hospital to Gerki Hospital. In, uh, in, in area. Mm, got a key. Mm. So when we came there, they told us that the, the neurolo neurologist had already closed, that we should come back Wednesday. And the doctor, the name they called me, Dr. Gerard, is somebody I know very well. Mm. So I now made a suggestion that please let's go back to NNPC because I know that doctor will be there on Tuesday. Mm. So instead of waiting till that tomorrow, that was how we drove back to NNPC. And when we got there, he said he had closed. I said, please, sir, he's in pain. Attend to us. He said, madam, because of you, I said, yes, sir. And he even told them. So we now went inside the office, said they should bring him. We brought the report of the MRI and every other drugs they gave him before. And he told us there, in the presence of Baba Buddha, the drug is stroke drug, not drug for headache. Oh, it's drug for stroke. That they gave him. So it's not drug for headache that day. So we all lamenting that why were they doing so? So he wrote the drugs for us, and we came back to Kuje to buy the drugs that night. And he now said we should come back to Gerki Hospital again on Wednesday. So that was on Wednesday we now got ready. We were going. That morning I I I I I went to his side to bathe him, dressed him up. He came to Palo to take breakfast. And when we were about going. I saw Bababu coming out from his room, and one of his hands was in his pocket. And as the hand was in his pocket, he locked the door. I saw him when he was locking the door, and we all went. I didn't say anything because uh, my attention was not on the key, on the phone, but how this man will get to hospital and get well. So eventually, the doctor said, I will keep him for 24 hours to observe him and administer drugs hourly. I said, okay. They took him to emergency. 
There, I now said, okay, uh, Baba, let me rush down to Kuji again and prepare food that he will eat that night and probably any other person. That was how I went to Kuji, came back with food. And when I came back, before then, when I returned from my father's burial, no, before, after I returned from my father, the first time they told me that he was sick, I started having issue with my BP. My husband himself took me to NNPC hospital, where I was asked to continue with the BP drug I used to take before because I stopped when the BP was getting normal. And then gave me sleeping drugs. Him too, they attended to him, gave us two of us drug daddy. So I was on drug through and even during my father's burial. So when they now admitted him this time around again, then uh, I brought food in the evening that Wednesday, and uh, Bababu now told me that, will I stay or him, he will stay. I said to her, if you will stay, please stay for that day, that this is my BP issue. I need to take my drugs and rest. Since, uh, since the morning, I've been up and down like this. So he said, okay. And that was how I left the hospital that night. On Wednesday. Then the following morning, had to bring their breakfast, the food that we eat in the afternoon and the evening. And that was how I continued. I will leave home eight o'clock in the morning, stayed all through there till about eight, nine. In fact, my husband would tell me, go, go. I said, no, I want to wait till when you have taken your last drug before I go. That was how we continued. From emergency, they took him to the ward. And in the ward, they had finished administering the drugs they were supposed to give him for the headache, and he was still complaining of the headache. They did not went further to do further investigation, and the doctor called me aside that the, the reading for his kidney is very high. Mm. So they were supposed to discharge him that Friday, but they are not going to leave him. They want to observe him. And I said, ah, ah. So that was how we stayed through the weekend. And on Monday, I asked them how far. They said they are taking another sample again to test whether it's still going up or has come down. So when they took another sample on Monday, the doctor said that at least the thing is reducing. I said, okay. So on, on Monday, his cousin brother, Laji Yusuf Akpama, came and some other persons. They were looking at the environment, no much drug for him again. They said the environment is not too good. Uh, it could be properly managed in NNPC than this place, and they suggested. So a doctor from NNPC came. The environment in Nash Gar 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 Hospital. Hospital. So hmm. the doctor from NNPC came and saw him and said, Madam, what do you want? I said to her, let them transfer him back to NNPC. At least we know that they are capable hands there. They said, okay. So the, uh, they, they said, I should go, uh, Allah Yusuf Akpama said, I should go to NNPC and get uh, a report asking them to transfer him to National NNPC Hospital. Then one Mr. Godwin Nabalaka was there and said, no, leave her alone. Come, two of us, we have car, let's go. He, she, he, Allah Yusuf said, no, that I should go. Then. They did not know that I have the doctor's number. And I went aside and called the doctor from NNPC number. And I said, Madam, what do you want? You want an ambulance? I say, yes. So he said, okay, I will link you up with the people that is coming to carry him. And that was how they came to carry him to NNPC hospital. Before then, sir. <coughs> Give her water. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Don't talk. <coughs> no, don't talk. Can you? Use uh, go to my office now, please. Don't talk, please. My brothers, my sisters, in case you are the wonder of which radio and TV station be this, this now human rights radio and television. And the name of the program now Brekete Family. Brekete Family is a reality radio and television talk magazine program. Here, we are listening to the other side of the stories we got yesterday. Madam, don't rush. Take your time. Keep it beside you, ma, on the other seat. Thank you, sir. 
Are you comfortable to continue? Yes, sir. Okay, continue. Before then, before we move to an NPC hospital, mm. if before I come, they write any drug, as soon as I'm coming, Abu Baba will give me that this is the drug they, they wrote. I should go and buy. I will go and buy. And if he wants to go back to Kujay, that he wants to go and see his family member, he always asks me to give him transport money to go back, which I do. And I was the one bringing food for him, for my husband, and any other person that will visit us in the hospital there to eat. All through his, we, our stay in Geriki Hospital, nobody, including Alaji Yusuf Akpama, brought water for him to drink, then even talk of food. Except one day that his sister's children brought rice. That was before we moved to uh, NNPC Hospital. There, in NNPC Hospital, a patient is entitled to a plate of food, but you, that you are staying with a patient, nothing for you. You make provision for yourself. So before we now left again for Geriki Hospital, if he tries to take water, he gets choked. If he wants to drink pap, he gets choked. So the only thing he was like taking like warm pap that is watery, he'll be taking it small, small, and swallow with a ogbono so that it will go down easily. So the very day that we, went, we left Geriki Hospital to NNPC, he did not take anything. And when we got to NNPC, I told them that since money has not eaten anything and he does not want to eat. So in the presence of the doctors there, they say bring pap or food for him, which I did. So like trying to take, he gets shook. So they told him that since you cannot eat and they can't leave you empty like this, mm -hmm. we will fix a tube through your nose down to your tummy so that something can enter your tummy. And that, play, that was when they started feeding him pap through that tube. So he was no longer eating any solid food. So as he was not eating solid food, initially I was bringing food for him, the, the, my in-laws, the younger ones, they were the one eating the food. So as they put the pap... You don't need to bring food again. No, I say they were the one eating... No, I say even I may be you. <laughs> as my husband know they chop again, I no go bring food again. There are other people staying there, sir. Oh, like who and who? The younger brother. Mm -hmm. Maybe the younger brother supposed to provide food for... Uh, anyway, continue. So they started feeding him through the pipe and... I will come in the morning, bring food for that one that we eat morning and afternoon. Then in the evening, I can go to restaurants to buy food or we buy cook and bread that he will eat. That was how we continued. I will come in the morning and then stay till 8, 8.30. Before we get to Kujie, it will be around 9 after 9 every day since the day he was admitted. So the last day that... He stayed in NNPC. All my body was paining me, and I had to leave there early because even one of my daughters was not feeling fine too. Two of them fell down in, in between this period. After I bought medicine for them from the pharmacy, I will leave them and go and stay with my husband. I will only be calling them to find out how they are doing. So this particular day, I left there earlier, like around 7, that I'm having pains all over my body too. So as soon as I got home, I took my drugs and I laid down to sleep. Then middle in the night, like around 12 or 1, I was seeing missed call on my phone. So I now summoned courage. I was even afraid. I said, what happened again? So I now called the person that called me. And he said at the time he was calling me was when they transferred him again back to Geriki. I now said, what happened again? Because before I left, the doctor said, instead of lying him down continuously, we should be able to carry him and do a walk around, which we did. And he walked on his own before I left there. So you know, so he don't know that if they get weak, 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 that's why they had to transfer him. So in the process of calling me that I did not pick my call, they called Baba Abu for his hospital card number. And that was how he got away. So early in the morning again, I now went to hospital, to Gerke Hospital. Then he was in ICU. And in ICU, their visiting time is 
11 to 12 a.m., then 4 to 5 p.m. in the evening. So if I go that morning between 8 and 9, I will stay there till around 7 o'clock in the evening before I will return back home. And I will, as I'm staying there, some that will come to visit, they will come between those visiting hours, they will go. I will still remain in that place till the last visiting time before I will still go back home. And that was how I was doing it. Then this very last day, on Sunday, 12, that he gave up, I was there in the morning. At that time, they didn't even allow me to enter, that they are busy. I will go and come back, they'll tell me they are busy. I went to stay outside under one the chairs they kept there. So at about one or thereabouts, they called me from inside the hospital in the, in the ward that Madame come. So uh, there was one of his friends that were sitting together. My heart said beating. I said, please, sir, follow me. He now went with me to inside the ward. Then the now gave me another list that I should go and buy buckets, that other white bucket that has cover that is transparent. I should buy perfume. I should buy mouthwash. I should buy one other thing. There are four things they asked me to buy. And I said, hmm. So sometimes their call is distress call. Mm -hmm. So that was, I now told the man that that was why I asked you to follow me because I was afraid. So we now came out. That day, I entered public motor from Kuje to um, Geriki. So I had to beg the man to help me, take me to area two to buy those things they asked me to buy. But before then, Baba Abu came to the hospital with somebody. And he went there. They didn't allow him to enter. So after he went to Geriki hospital uh, to buy those things, he now came to the hospital, to the room, and they did not allow him. He carried phone and called Alaji Suleiman, Alaji uh, Yusuf Akwamadan. I have left a standing order that they should not allow anybody inside except me. I was in the market. Alaji Yusuf called me. I said, Madam, there is a problem. I said, what problem again? He said, to Abu Baba went there, and they told him that I said they should not allow anybody inside. I said, which kind of wahala is this? Why are you people looking for trouble like this? Why will I leave standing order that they should not see him? Why? They gave me paper now to buy things, and that is where I am in the market with Sama now. So I did not tell anybody anything. And I said, okay. So before I came back to the clinic to submit those things, he had already gone. So I now waited till another time, the 4 to 5 p.m. for visiting. And there and then, I saw him. So when we saw him with Alaji Akpam and some other persons, the doctor now told us that he would like to talk with us. And they carried us to one of their rooms. And they now started telling us that, um, have anybody told us the situation of his health? All, all this time he has come, this, that. We said, no, nobody has really told us anything. So the doctor started explaining to us the stages, how his health is degenerating. Mm -hmm. So Elijah Akbamana responded that whatever our God wishes, let the will of God be done. Mm -hmm. That as human, we can only try our best. But everything is in the hand of God. And Akpama is his younger brother. His, his cousin. I don't know who is senior among them. Mm -hmm. So that was how we left. But when I when we went there during the visitation that I saw him, the BP, where the BP was reading, I saw that the BP was dropping. Mm -hmm. As in, that one was 90.58. I was just shaking my head. I see somebody that has high BP before. No. And it's now dropping it's crashing. to this level. And before then, he's not eating solid food. And the sugar kept on increasing to 31. They kept on wondering what could have resulted to this rising of the sugar. I even asked the doctor personally that if somebody is not eating food, and food is the cause of this uh, sugar yes, something, yes. so why will the uh, sugar, sugar be, be shooting sugar up? Mm. They say it's surprising them too, right from NNPC. And a day in NNPC, one of the head nurse called me, and Madam, I'm very angry with you. I say, what is that? That I bought glucose, and they were giving my husband in the night when they were not. I said, no, I am not aware. Hey. And the head nurse told me that they caught them when they were doing this thing in the night. I said, no, I who didn't. Who and who? 
that time, the younger brother was sleeping there on Friday, a son to his uh, late sister. I said, no, I did not authorize them. And even when they made the suggestion, I said, no, the suggestion should come from us and not them. That was what I used to tell them then. So the, the nurse, head nurse then, had to come and seize the, 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 the glucose, glucose and them. the copland milk they, they brought then and took them to her office. She showed me that, see, I will not give you back. I said, thank you, ma. So we were now wondering why the sugar was going up. He's not eating food. And the pap they were giving him was a quash pap mm. that contains protein, every other thing that at least should balance the sugar. So they were managing that. They were now, they now, the doctor now told us that there is like a kind of infection in the chest. As if there was a time he ate food and he, the food did not come down. Within this period, no, it's no. like before he okay. felt sick. Okay. So and like he, he he went to lie down, and the food went to a wrong place. So like in children, they call it pneumonia. I don't know the name. They used to call it in medical in their own. So he called the name for us. I now said, oh, what do we do?" He said, "That's why they're not giving him anti the strongest antibiotics so that those bacteria, I be all those things mm. now can clear. So they were on it before." If he's trying to cough, he won't be able to bring out anything. Mm. So, but as soon as they put that pipe, if he's coughing, he will be bringing out yellow mucon. mucon. Everybody was happy. At least you'll be able to talk or swallow something. So in IC unit, that's Sunday that he gave up. After the doctor might have finished telling us everything, I now came back to sit outside. And I was sitting there, another set of people. That time, Elijah Akpama has, Akpama has gone. Every other person has gone. I was just there alone. Then some people came from Kuje again to see. And I told them, this time, they will not allow you to enter inside again. So we now stayed outside the corridor there. We even prayed. And I said, let me follow them since they are coming from Kuje so that I will not go and enter public transport again. So when I, was, when I entered the house, they dropped me. And my tenant was telling me how far I said, mm, that is not getting better, or all these things. And I went inside. As I'm dropping my bag, they are not calling me that they say we should come back to the hospital again. I say, Kai, this one, I was just shaking my head. So I've, they gave me food to eat. I couldn't even eat very well. I was shaking, and I had to call Elijah Akpama again. That they called me and said we should come, me and you should come back to the hospital. Say, where are you now? I say, I'm in the house. Say, let's go. And then I had to call my younger brothers to carry me at that time so that we could go. And when we went, they were all waiting for me to come. So when I, when I, ent when I came and I entered the doctor's office, they say, eh, earlier on, I told you this, that, his kidney is not functioning very well. He cannot produce urine, the heart, this one, that one. He was saying all those things. I'm sorry, we lost him. <coughs> That was how I was just thing. And the, the were ten and started crying. All of us were crying. The doctor now held me. Do you want to see him? I said, yes, I want to see him. And they now took me to where he was lying down. Mm -hmm. I stood there, I was crying. Then we came back to the doctor's office. We still, to nine, the men, there was the only female there. They said they should carry me home since Kuje is very far so that the men they can organize and put him into mortuary. And that was how I came back to Kuje almost to 10. And before that time that I was going to the hospital from all Baba Abu said yesterday, sir, I want to respond to some of those things. I will leave home in the morning between 8 and 9. I will not enter my house till about 9, 30, 10. Before I come back, my children will be sleeping. At times, I will not even eat food in the night because it's already late. I have to wait till the following morning. And that was how I was going. And when my husband was in the hospital, when it's 6 o'clock, he will ask me to go, that it's getting late. He does not like somebody going out late in the night. I said, no, I want to wait until you take your last drug before we go. So I did not leave my husband in the hospital and did not go. He knows my health condition and that I will come and stay in the hospital from morning till evening about that nine and in the night for me to take my BP drug and rest. That was why he was asking me to go. It's not because 
I did not want to stay with him. And Baba Abu knows about it. And then he said something about celebrating my birthday. Last year, June 29, to be precise, was my husband's, June 29 used to be his birthday. He had never told me, but his senior brother said, my children said, they saw the list where he wrote all of their names and their birthday dates. And my last baby kept on disturbing me that, mommy, we have not been celebrating daddy. So let's celebrate daddy that year, last year. I told her I don't have money. Say, mommy, please. Even ask some people that were close to me to beg me. And that was how I started the arrangement of doing a, a surprise birthday pack for him. So that fateful day, I sent text messages across some of his friends. Even Bababu, I called him that this is what I want to do for my husband. And then that they should just divert him from the house. When I'm ready, I will call them so that they come. And that was how the whole thing happened. And he, he was surprised. And everybody was happy, including himself, because he never expected it. And after the whole thing, the friends and my own friends that came now said, Daddy, you will do for her in her own turn. That is this year, on 27th of February. He said, no problem. And since that last year, we said making arrangements. Because by this year, 27th of February, I, I clocked 50 years. So I said I was going to celebrate my golden age. So all of us agreed. So the things that we needed, I said getting some things ready. I did not know that my father was going to pass on. So if you go to my page on uh, Facebook, I, I, I showed my father's coffin. I said, I never, on that day, that 27, I never knew that this day will come, that I was planning that you and my mother will be with me this day. But it pleases God to take you. And right from the day that my, I buried my dad, I told myself I was not going to celebrate anything birthday. That this year, to me, as human, it's not, did not favor me. So why will I celebrate birthday? But the only thing was just to thank God for attaining this age and i did not know that my husband was going to follow suit and on that day that 27th my birthday date my husband was in geriki hospital that was the first time not in icu unit and the pictures we only uploaded pictures every my sisters my brother cousins friends uploaded my picture on facebook happy birthday i never gathered anybody even nice fish i did not cook in my house for anybody to eat on my birthday was the normal food on Sunday was 26. We ate normal rice that we used to cook. And on Monday, I was in my husband in the hospital today. I'd never celebrated any birthday with anybody. And yesterday again, I, I had the main mention of my husband kept goats and whatever that he was going to use for Easter. So Easter has come and gone. He did not call us. He did not tell us. And he did not bring the goat for us. So, and the goat was meant for Easter. So, was, is he ready to carry the goat and carry it to the family house? When after burial, they are doing a, a meeting that he will, handed, he will hand over the goat to them. I don't know. Then the last day I saw Baba Boo was when they came with a family member. All of them, in the, they all agreed to come to airport guesting and held their meeting for about six hours before they came to my house to tell me what they have agreed to do. The first time they came after my husband died was five days after my husband died, they came. One day after his death, they, they did not come. They did not come. Two days, they did not three come. days, they did not come. four days, they did not come. Five days they, the, before they came. He died on Sunday and they came on Thursday. So all what people mm. that- All we, of them? Yes. Including Baba Abu. Baba Abu came that uh, Monday. That was all. Then um, Akpama came that Monday. That was all. That is Yusuf Allah, Yusuf Akpama. Then what people we eat, what people we drink, chairs that pe some people we sit down, mm. nobody asked me of it. I was the one doing it. Even the day he came, Barista Salomi came. He, because there was nothing, nobody was saying anything. He and his, her elder sister wanted to use their own money to go and buy food to cook in the house that day. And when they told me that this is what she wants to do, I said, no, she should keep the money. Who is Barista Salome? M my husband's elder sister's daughter. Okay. And I said, no, she should not. 
I have beans, they should wash it and do bean soup. And I have uh, semo, uh, grinded corn and cassava. So they should turn uh, semo with it so that people can eat. She should not go and buy anything. So that was what happened that day. And after they left, they not, in the meeting, they were now saying, um, did my husband tell me, peradventure, when he was alive, when we are talking that, uh, I, they will bury me in this place, they will bury me in this place. I said no. But that all I know was, as he retired, he said he was going back to stay in Lokoja where he had his businesses, so that he will be overseeing them. He left these things in the hands of people and it was not producing results. Mm. So he wanted to relocate back to Lokoja. Even the house that a tenant was staying, he ejected the tenant, he was repairing it so that he will go and stay in that place. So when they asked me of my own opinion, I said, Tom, since he, he, he had an intention mm. of relocating there, and this is where he wants to say that I will be glad if they can lay him to rest there. In that place. And they said, okay, that, that was what they also were thinking about. Mm. We arrived at that one. So, uh, Alaji Yusuf Akpama got up and said, nobody should say that Sabo will tell, my husband's name is Sabo too, we tell them that he, uh, this is the place they will bury him, that he cannot die now. That he's kill, they kill his brother because of property. And my uncle got up and said, woe to anybody that kill him for, because of property. Judgment is waiting for that person at the gate of heaven. But anybody that is because of property you kill this man, the property can only last in your hand not more than three years. That all these things will go. They are vanity. So, and I started talking, putting things together, what they are going to do, this one, and they arrived there, two points. No, they set a committee that we uh, sit down to do what and what they need. And they arrived at 2.8 million naira. And my uncle said, this money that you have a mark for this barrier, when this man was alive, who brought pure water for him? Who brought food for him? Nobody. And when we were in Gen Gariki General Hospital, on three occasions, Baba Abu with Alaji Yusuf Akpama, we, 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 we come to him and whisper something to his ear because he cannot talk very loud. Mm. Anything they say, he said, they will call my son, give them, give them. Mm -mm. He said, they, are, they want to pray for him. There was a question they collect 125,000. They collected 60 and 50. In the name of prayers? Yes, sir. Now, where the prayer, I know they answer, may they return the money. So, so no, 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 this is service failure. Yeah. My, uh, we, uh, even though she should come late, <laughs> you understand? Uh, this is service failure. You, I gave you money for prayer so that the, my husband will not die. Now he's late. Return the money. Eh? Okay, madam. You, so, have, you have two minutes to round up. Okay, sir. So after they left, for the, when they came there f uh, five days after his burial, they left two or three days after. Uh, his cousin brother who said, and called me and said, Madam, I learned the ATM is with you people. I said, Yes. Do you know his pin? I, I said, Yes, we know the pin. He now said, I should check whether February salary has dropped. Mm -mm. I said, Okay. And then I now thought, You are asking me this question, and the phones are with Elijah Baba Abu. Mm. So, how will I know whether the salary dropped? Or not, I now called my elder, uh, my brother in law. That is the person my husband is following. That this is the question your cousin asked me Are you aware? He said he's aware, hmm. and I did not say anything on that one. Then, a few days after, Yusuf Akbama and Bababu came again and told me that the family has resolved to sell his car to bury him. And I said, Ah, ah, where is it done? You will use his car, his money to bury him. That many people have died in the family. He, he, he asked them, what do you have? What do you have? And when they bring the money, he adds. Mm. Now it is his turn. Nobody wants to bring up money mm -hmm. to bury him. Mm -hmm. This is wickedness. It's not done anywhere. Like Yusuf Akbama told me that it is done. That that is what they used to do. That when his own uh, junior brother died, he, he used his brother's money to bury it his brother. I said, that is you. But other people, they don't do like that. So we disagreed. 
and they left. He said, this is the message they asked him to pass to me. And I said, go and tell them that I have disagreed. I, will, I did not agree. So when they came back, this last one that they met after five hours and came to me, that this is what they agreed to do, what is my view? And I said, okay, whatever you people want to do, do it. But remember that he has children. He has, the, way, the same way he has brothers, he has children and he has a wife. All along this time, they were telling them of my children's school fees because he used to pay it semester by semester. The, the three of them are in university. Two in Bingham and one in Nile University. So Elijah Kwama told me that my husband told him on the sick bed that he has paid two years' school fees. I don't know what brought about the discussion. And he has never paid one full year at a stretch. He used to break it. Even um, Godwin Abalaka told him he disagreed. Elijah uh, Alassan told him he disagreed. So they just left the Did case. you confirm that he actually paid for two years? No, sir, he didn't. So we now agreed then that they should go to the school to find out whether he has paid for the two years or he did not pay for the two years. Only for you to discover that so, it wasn't true. Yes, but they did not tell me again. But Barista Salome came to my house three, four days ago and said, he called him that he's in their school, or that he does not know what he's doing there, and nobody has told me what they are doing there or what they are not doing there. Then in between this period, they were asking me, that we should go and collect certificate of debt for them so that they can convey the cops to Lokoja. So their action begin to tell me their body language. I'm not comfortable with it. So my son had to go there to collect the certificate by himself. This is my first time of coming out since my husband died. Even outside my gate, I have not stepped there. So my son now had to go and collect it. On the day they scheduled for mm. them to go, I called Yusuf Akpama to tell him that, no, we will not go. We are going to wait till after my husband's burial before we pursue or find any document. Alaja Akpama told me that, don't I know that this certificate will help us to do so many things like uh, uh, letter of administration? I said, yes, but we are going to wait. Only for him to go to the pension office. And then he said they told him that the mother and the son came to collect. He did not call me to tell me. He called those people in Lokoja to tell them again. And they, one of them now called me, Madam. I have a voice note on that. Madam, you told us we agreed on the, in the meeting that we are going to collect that certificate. Now you are telling us that uh, you have collected police report for us. Are you the one to collect police report for us to carry our dead, body, uh, dead brother to Lokoja? That all these things that is happening in the family today that me, I think is a miracle for me. Can't I wait that after the burial we will sit down to agree and discuss what to do? And I said, oh, please don't be angry. If it's not my duty to collect police report for you, please go and collect your own. Don't be angry. Even Salome, I told her, her, she was begging me to release it, release death certificate. And I said, why are you people particular about this death certificate? That you don't want to collect a police, police report. report. And at the same time, this side is pressing for death certificate. He, she, on her side, called me that my husband's senior brother said, my son should bring passport. And I said, for what? She told me she does not know. I said, you don't know? She said, yes. I said, okay. My son came back, I told him. He now called her and said, yes, Uncle Jerry said you should bring your passport to do affidavit. And I said, affidavit for what? That he is a nurse of kin. I said, a child that is above 18 years cannot go and swear an affidavit for himself. Why must he be the uncle that will go and swear an affidavit for him? And you people are doing all these things. You are not carrying us along. You are not telling us anything. I say we should remember God though, in all these things that you are doing. So he now said, I should not worry. Nobody will treat us bad. Nobody will collect anything from us. Who told you that? But Salome told me. She's that, in the studio, right? Yes, sir. Thank you very much, my That uh, mm. they, they, they helped her during her own mother's case. They did not eat anything. I say, your mother's case is different from my case. Mm. So last, last year, my husband's junior brother had an accident. They car killed an Igbo boy. So those people were trying to bring problems and to the extent that they will come and burn down our house maybe because my husband was working in a reputable place he wants to you know do they don't want justice so when we got the news of the report we remove everything in the house even our cars 
from the house. That time that Kujie prison was um, was yes. attacked, mm. my car was even in Kujie prison. And where my car was staying is only my car that they did not destroy. Every other car around my car was destroyed. So I now said, running from problem, entering problem again. Mm -hmm. And I had to go and remove my car. And it was that time he packed the document, everything. Your late husband. My late husband told my son, this is the bag my documents are. I am carrying it to local jail. I am removing it because of all these things that is trying to happen. And that was how the bag of his document, everything was removed from Kujie to uh, local jail. And after this day, we are just hearing rumorously they are in possession of this. They will see how we are going to do this. Now all these things we are hearing. So what are these people up to? They have not even buried this man. No talk up and down, talk up and down. Even the last one I heard was that they will see how my children will go to school. That was on Saturday and I was crying. I said, because they are not God, my children will go to school. We, yeah. <clears throat> And in their meetings, are sorry, mm -hmm. where they heard in airport guessing, they asked my tenant to get ready to park. They did not tell me. Did they inform you of the date of burial? Yes, we agreed together. What date is it? 13th, 14th, and mm -hmm. then 11th today was going to be service of song in okay. our residence. Okay, thank you. My brothers, my sisters, when I don't hear her own side of the story. Now, because Salome did for Barista Salome did for studio, we go live make we hear from Barista Salome. Barista Salome, please come forward. Good morning, ma. Good morning, ordinary president. Please sit down, ma. Good morning, Nigeria. I'm mm. privileged to be here mm. this morning. Yes. You hear everything we yes. should talk. Yesterday, I was preparing. I was in the bedroom preparing to go for go to Kuje for the songs of service today for the preparation. When I was hearing calls, even my in-laws were calling my husband. What is happening in Berkete family? Your wife say <clears throat> your wife say siblings are in a break at a family. What is happening to the property? I say, which property? We've not buried my uncle. Nobody is talking about anything, property. Another call will come. I have to come out of the room like that. Went to, because I was preparing to pack, I have packed from my... Former house. Former house mm. to another place now. So I have to go and look for who has a radio and I was listening to, at least they've gone far. I listened, I was shocked. I said, this is a big slap and this is a shame. On us, I wanted calling her. Another told her, "Say there's no need of calling. Just sit down." My husband was even there. My husband listening to everything. <laughs> Thank you, ordinary president. Yes, ma yes, we are one big family. My mom is late. My mom happens to be the first child of the family. Mm -hmm. They are my maternal side. Sorry for your loss, man. Then my mom and this my uncle are best. Of friends, it's only death that can separate them. Mm. He was the one that brought me up. I mm. stayed there twelve good years with this woman. With this woman before I got married and left. When my mom died, my uncle don't want to release me to my parents. Mm -hmm. Even if I want to go to my father, I say, "What are you going to do?" Remember, you are the only child, surviving child for that man. I don't want to lose you. I was okay. I was with them. But this main issue that comes now is that I think there is misunderstanding hmm. of which I have been telling auntie. I will plead with her. I will plead with my people. Because before my uncle's dead, they have not been in a good relationship. She and her husband. She and her, the family, the family members. Okay, okay. That is the truth. I stayed with her. I know what I passed through, mm. but I am a Christian. Even when my uncle was in the hospital, yes, they were talking about glucose. We went for her father's barrier. That very day I was to go, my car had issues. I end up, my sister was saying, how are we mm. going to do if we didn't go for this barrier? I said, remember that this is the man that I stay with all through. He likes people. Let's charter vehicle. We chartered vehicle and went for the barrier. That was the place I saw my uncle last that we talk and laugh. And I said, are you going? I said, he said, ah, let me give you passenger. I said, no, uncle, my car is filled up. I refused telling him that it was charter. I chattered very cool down. We left, we came back. Then there in the barrier, my elder sister was sick from 
that place. So I was not, my eye was not on Grand mm. because that is my only surviving sister. Mm. I was putting eye on her. When we came back, two days in Tava, me too fell sick. Mm -hmm. So Anasha, I was telling my sister that ah, my uncle has not called us to know if we arrive safely. I tried calling him, the phone rang, the phone went off again. I tried again, I could not reach him. Until Thursday, thereabout, my other sister called me that our senior uncle just called with that uncle is not feeling fine. That from the barrier on his way coming back, whether he said some, he felt as if something hit him on his head. They told me be his stress, mm. and they took him to the hospital. He was on admission, but that they brought him back to Abuja. And I said, okay, let me try and call him. I called him. His number was not uh, responding. There was it the third day there about me too. I I was you sick. Took Ill, yes. I took ill. I called auntie. He said he's getting better. I said his number is not going. I, so anytime I want to reach him, if I cannot reach him, it's she I will call. So on Sunday, there about after the election, on Sunday, I've not been to church for two Sundays. I said, okay, let me go to church. I was in the service. I was not really myself. And I said, let me drive from here and go to Kuje and go and see my uncle. Where is Kuje? Where is Gwagwalada? Even if I'm sick, my husband can drive me down, but at least I can manage. So Anan drove. On our way going, because my first son has been running temperature. When we got to Kujia, say from Kujia, we'll take him to the hospital. When we got home, until was in the kitchen, I went to meet her. We were talking with Jesus. I was not laughing with her. Nasa, where is my uncle? He's not back from church. Or he has gone out as usual. Nasa, which house? He's in the hospital. I say, hospital. What happened? He said he's on admission. I said, and you didn't tell me if I call. You say he's getting better so when i went out i went to find and i discovered that they say he's seriously sick in the hospital our intention was to go the next day since he said he's in Girki hospital the way i heard that his condition is mm. and i told my sister that it's not what we can wait till tomorrow mm. let's drive my sister said can i drive i say i will be able to drive down to Girki hospital that. So Antina asked me, and I told her, uh, are you going now? She said, she, she's not going now. She should go much later. And if she goes, she will not come back on time. That was in the afternoon by now that we're talking. So I announced, okay, we are going to look for fuel. If we get fuel, because this fuel will not take me to Giriki and take me back to Guagualada. Mm -hmm. So we came, we left. We got fuel on our way coming to town. Before we get to Geriki Hospital, that apple, the car stopped. Mm -mm. We were there for like one hour, 30 minutes before the car. We kicked the car again, the car started. We now went to Geriki Hospital. We were there till around past five. When my uncle was saying that, just go. Mm. So they said he was weak. I said, ah, he weak? How is he? Is he the head? So I asked, I was asking my other uncle. He was mm. telling me what and what. And I said, okay. Which I, of the uncles? My junior uncle, the one that is sleeping with him in the hospital. I left. So the way I saw his condition is not something uh, encouraging. encouraging. So I now call one of my pastors. I said, please help us to pray. My uncle is seriously sick in the hospital. Unlike him, he hardly fall sick. The next day I came, when they said he's weak, when I got to Guagwala that day, because I gave my son ibrufin on our way going, I bought ibrufin so that his temperature will calm down. When I got home, and I went to uh, a pharmacy, I bought him. Um, I was the one that bought the Complan. I bought Complan, I bought glucose, I bought a honey, this original honey, and bought some things that he would take. Because when I went, there was no even water there. Mm. I bought stable water that I'll take to the hospital. I was the one that bought the complaint. Was it the next day or the third day? I cook, I took to them. I used to go to hospital in the morning, in the evening to see him. So when she came one of these, she said, ah, this glucose should not give to him because it's sugar. This I said, oh, I did not know. I was the one that bought it. Since they say he's weak, and they say his pap is taking, or teeth is taking, so that he will put the complaint mix mm. inside mm. the, this. So when she said that, I now told them, don't give him this thing. Then I even took the honey and left with the honey. 
they were moving him from Kirki Hospital to there and there, yes. there and there. Mm. So in the course of that process, man of my uncle wants to challenge her that uh, your husband is critically sick like this and you are not even deemed fit to sleep in the hospital. I say, this thing does not need please. All we are after is for this man to be okay and come out of the hospital. Even she, I told her, say, Auntie, please, whatsoever they are saying, even side talk, please don't listen. All you will be after is how this man will be okay and come out of the hospital. We did till he died. Yes, she said she has been coming to hospital in the morning. I know that it was when he was in ICU unit. That was when she comes to hospital in the morning. She will stay till in the evening. But when he was in the other hospital, mm. sometimes it's in the afternoon she'll call. Because me, I, I go to hospital in the morning mm. and I will leave. I will only say what I know. Mm. So, so there was a day I even asked her when we're in Geruki, is it Geruki Hospital? Mm. I asked her, see, auntie, how far about the hospital bill? That was when she was telling me that he's on life insurance. I said, okay. Then the main issue that even brought me, it was because of that indictment mm -hmm. that they indicted me. The passport thing. Yes. I said, let me come and clear my Please state. clear. Please. My auntie here knows that my uncle has other children outside the marriage. Okay. And that has been a bone of contention. Even before his death, even after he died, there was a day I was talking to her. I said, Auntie, you already know that this man has children outside. If they come, accept it with good faith. She said, no, after all that her husband wrote, she brought a lawyer for the lawyer to, to write an undertaking for my uncle to sign that he does not have children outside. But because she was preparing for her father's burial, her eye was not on the ground to sign it. I said, until you know he's telling lie. Me and you, we know he's telling lie. But you too, you told me. Didn't you tell me? Is the other children you were telling me about that there are three children with an Igala woman? That is what I have not asked my uncle. I was thinking to go for the burial and come back. I will come and meet him and ask him that. Is it true that you also have another children with a so-so person? Mm. Unfortunately, he went for the burial and this is how the thing ended. She now said, hey, she, she's waiting till that time. Everything. So each meeting, my cousin said that we did not do meeting. We held meeting. I have my phone is here. I will show you the record of the meeting that we had with her. Mm. Then the issue of the uh, passport, this thing. The last time we went to do one particular meeting. After we did the general meeting, the set committee, I was among the committee, the bills they brought was almost 2.7 something. My senior uncle said, that money is too much. That after all, the children will still go to school. That they should uh, vet it. So when they came that very day to Kuje, they called me. I said, I'm on my way coming to Kuje. They said, okay, they're in airport, guess it. Come, let's vet that um, uh, estimate and reduce the cost. We vet it, they reduce the cost. The cost she gave us for uh, service of some, we did not vet it. We left it like that. Even the first uh, estimate they gave for, that we did, I took it to her. I explained everything to her. She was even the one that said, this price you put here is too small. Uh, when we did for my father's burial, like this, like this, she helped us to add, uh, add some price and reduce some from the estimates we made. Then when we're doing that meeting, and I asked them, because before two days after that day, I asked them, I said, come on, I want to clarify something, because there's an issue on ground about my uncle having another children, apart from the Yoruba son that we have. They say, no, he did not tell them like that. It's not possible. It's not true. The one they know is that Yoruba son. I said, okay, I want to be sure, because I want to ask him, maybe you people are in the picture. Why me? I am not in the picture because the wife also showed me the picture of how my uncle snapped and snapped with those uh, children and based on what they said my uncle said he said yes he knows the woman he has dated the woman before but it was a coincidence that they snapped together she's just even hearing it for the first time um. so i now told them that day that okay with the look of things if you people want to do any process you people should remember that this son that you people acknowledge you people should include him in the property you people are going to, um, what are they calling, they are going to share. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. Normally, in our family, when my late mom died, it was my elder uncle, Uncle Jerry, 
that deposed to an Afida feed, and in, me, I was the nurse of king. I told them, no, they used my elder sister and him as the nurse of king. When they did the process of the everything, the money was going into my elder sister's account. That was the money they used in paying my school fees for five years I did in Kogi State University. Thank I also explained to her that nobody will take what belongs to you. Nobody will take what belongs to the children. Whatsoever your husband has, that is to the best of my knowledge, will be given to them. But why she's having grudges against me, that it is because I have told them that they should also remember the child that is outside. Thank you. It's okay, dear. Sir, I've not finished it. Sorry, sir. Quickly. The issue of the passport. Mm. So, that very day, my uncle now come in, that is calling my uncle's wife. She's not picking her calls. I said, what type we said they need the passport for a feed a feed. I said, okay, I will call, I will tell her. I told her, mm. I come watching what she call me. He said, What are they using the passport for? That was 8 39. I was in Lube that I didn't go with car daddy. I said, Watch when I get home, I can't hear you. I will call you back. I later he later call. I say, Yes, they are using it for a feed a feed. And why they want to do their feed a feed? They want to do a feed a feed for nurse of King, my senior uncle, her own son, and the only son that is outside. So that whenever they process uh, their letter of administration, that son that is outside that she don't want to accept will be part of um, mm. the property that mm. they want to share. My dear. And sorry, sir, she said nobody came. The day my uncle died, immediately they told me and I was communicating that Sunday all through I was week. I said, I saw my uncle. Hope he has not passed on. She said today is, is critical that they didn't allow her in to see him. I said, okay. Immediately in the evening, I was calling. Nobody was speaking. And I called her back. She said she's just entering the house. So that they said she should come back. And I have to say, Kai, this man has gone. Immediately, I call people around that place and please, this is what happened. They should please go to the house and make sure that the children are okay. Because this night, the mother is still in the hospital. My uncle has passed on. But if they get home and they discover that the children are not aware, please, they should not inform them yet. The next day, me, my husband, and some of my auntie and my uncle, who were there the next day, I even slept there. So her own friend, and I said to her, in our own culture, if somebody died like this, definitely there will be food that people will eat. I went to the other store. There was nothing there. I went to the other store. It was locked. I gave my other sister money. I said, go and buy a bag of um, semo, buy some things, fish, everything in the market that we need to cook. So they were on their way going to market before she now come in. Why did I give them money to go and buy things? And I didn't come to meet her. I said, your eye is not on the ground. That is why I gave them money to go and buy things so that they will cook, people will eat. But sir, what we want to say is that nobody is uh, willing to take their You have said your own sad children. story. Please, sir, my uncle said that they should please beg her. Our sons of service is tomorrow. Our bearer is a 14, 13, 13, um, is it 13, 14. Please, when we are through with the bearer, please, we want you to handle the matter. We'll oh. come back uh, and Barista hear the full Salome. story, sir. sir. You have, sp you have um, spoken for yourself. Yes, sir. And you have, as well, spoken on behalf of the family. Mm. Do, do you have the authorization to speak on behalf of the family? No. Because what they said that they should just plead with her uh, that after was, the burial. They, they gave you that instruction back. to give us the message yes, on sir. behalf of the family. Yes, sir. Thank you. First of all, when I wait, they watch the program all over the world and the people where they listen. Salome, uh, Barista Salome. Sir. Me and you don't see before. No, sir. But she's an honest woman. Let's appreciate her. <laughs> In fact, from my on the surface assessment, she is the peacemaker of the family. Let's appreciate her. <laughs> she is full of wisdom. She knows my sister here. And for you to know that this lady here, this woman here, is a great woman. She had her reservations about this woman's behavior while she was living with them. She did not mention any here. Please, let's appreciate her again. 
Now they can't woman way. If you be woman, you be friend with her. Who not get me some understanding? Your secret way she know she no go ever expose her. Till maybe una go reconcile again. If na man you be you marry this kind of woman. Una get me some understanding. Even if una divorce, she no go expose your secret. Please let's appreciate her again. <laughs> Barista Salome. Sir. Talk to the mic. How many children you get? I have two boys, sir. You go you go born plenty again by the <laughs> grace of God. <laughs> Please I don't know if my husband still wants. He's here. He go, uh, where is the husband? The way I see him, I go, he go live for more. Make we appreciate her. <laughs> Sir, you are lucky. Hold on, please. You are lucky to have her as a wife. We are thankful to God for your life. Thank you. Because of the request. through you by the family, we will stand down this matter. Thank you, ordinary president. My sister here is pained, but I think she has anger issue. Maybe as a result of what has happened, because he, he get things will go happen, will go change your mood, your character temporarily. I just didn't know her. This is the first time. Madam, me and you don't see before. No, Talk to me. No, sir. Good. But well, one thing I can say about you and your late husband is the fact that you trained your children well. They are well brought up. Let's appreciate them. <laughs> before we do any other thing, after all the, the, the request, but after, um, the, is it songs of? Um, service of service service. Of song is okay, a service of songs. Then what again? Wake keeping and burial. After everything, the first thing we will do is to reconcile you with your husband's family. Thank you, sir. You need it more than any other thing. These children may have the impression or they believe or the deception that they can survive without their relations is a lie. It's just a matter of time. There shall come a time when one documentation or the other will require will require somebody from their father's side to say this is to whom it may concern. This person, I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. If we they do something for today, make we they remember to say tomorrow fit come and tomorrow they pregnant. Make we not leave behind. This, your girls, they go one marry. Some families go, we won't go to the father's family, not the mother's family. Responsible man will not marry from a woman and her family alone. He will want to go to the father's family. Are we together? Yes. So, that time. Uncle, give me one of the uncle's names. Uncle Jerry. Uncle, Uncle Jerry. Uh, my, uh, my, the people, the, the, the man I'm going to marry is coming with his people. They want to come and see you. Tell them, say, I know they. Or something like that. Oh, if they are wicked, they allow you to come. You sit. You bring drink. They refuse to drink. As they sit down, they go wait for somebody to go urinate. Somebody go follow her. Now our daughter, una want marry. But we know the camp person who una want marry. I'm just sorry for your son. He go wakago. The person go come back. You go here. Um, please, we will come back next Saturday. Are we together? Please, madam. Now today we see. We never see tomorrow. May God bless all of us. Yes. Now before any... But then you're not going to talk again. Okay, Nobody is going to talk again. I'm in charge here. 
The only thing I will request for people, anybody who feels say Barista Salome deserves standing ovation, make we make it give her. If you don't think she deserves it, just leave it. The ovation is for you. Madam, so you don't think she deserves it, right? Mama is standing. Mama is 80, almost 90. Mama is standing for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My brothers, my sisters, if I look down and I see the time, don't they give us signal, signal to do things, signal, make we continue to deliver, not they go. Hmm. You, you go give me. Am I handling this matter well? Thank you. 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 Una, thank you. Yes, ma. Please. Nothing sweet like peace. And anything where peace no bring come. Gra gra. No, they feel bring and come. Hmm? Even for worry, where they give, give different names. And never hear a person where born picking give and gra gra. <laughs> when I understand yes, sir. this woman here only God knows what some of these her husband's brothers have done to her quietly if somebody stand here if Kemi they face Una like this Mm -hmm. And uh, okay, no, no, no. <laughs> Can we day here now? She be a day when I back. Make when I no look back, I beg, I beg, and I. Between okay, oh camera capture me. <laughs> okay, let's assume say camera no capture me. When I see what I do her, no. what I do her now like this. Now people no go know say I do her like this from on her back. No. When she can react, me how do we think people go think of her behavior? She's a troublemaker. She's what? She's a troublemaker. Every action where you, every reaction where you see you get action with trigger them. some of the times if not most of the times madam take heart anybody with the will be man where they torture you you go soon die Amen. in wife go join on a membership Amen. you go give her seat near you are we together? Yes, but you need to work on your temper. Mm. You don't have a good relationship with your husband's uh, siblings and relations, which is not good. We all make mistakes. If not mistakes, say your husband accidentally gave another uh, woman belly for outside, so be it. What if to say before your husband and die, when I sell everything, do treatment before he die? He no can leave anything behind. Some people sick like that till he, everything finish before. So nobody is, if, in fact, they even borrow money. So now how to clear the debt? Now come, be, they come, they share. You, you go bring like this, you go bring like this. Talk more of this one way. God help you now. Whatever thing that is going to your children will go to your children. The one that is supposed to go to you will go to you. The one that is supposed to go to those other children, if there are many, will go to them. Barista Salom, you say now one person. There is no way this one person can take what 
would what four or five uh, three people uh, will take calm down you're my sister i love you please have i handled it well You see, sometimes when you didn't make peace, devil go they blow whistle somewhere. And they talk say by my position as the ordinary president of the extraordinary citizens of the global village, I talk say nobody go talk here again. If I allow the son go go get something to say. The daughters, madam, from where Tin then talk, Salome go won't talk something. Mm. The brothers, where they listen to the program, they go get something to counter. Madam, make we allow frog lie down where he lie down before he go stand away. Get the go no say he no get nyash for back. Now my grandfather tell me, say, frog tell him in children, say, instead way, shame go catch him for your in-law presence. Make Nyash finish for back. <laughs> Those days, if frog and lizard them, they waka. Now frog, sorry, sir, sorry, sir. Now frog, if he talking, now frog talking the feet pass because he get big bum bum. Mm. Yes. Ladies, they admire him before, because of him, big bumbo. <laughs> but one day, lizard come the challenge him. Anyway, when he see him, he go say, who I catch? He say, na me. You know, fine people know they like trouble. Now, what, what people like me, they like trouble. Mm. Who I catch? He say, na me. One day, if we village square, na me, he go leave him. This one, na me. One day, frog go greet the in-laws. Nine leaves I come meet her for front of him. He said, who I catch? He said, now your father. Amen. Eh, eh. And you know, say, holding this fight, no be who blow who? Now who fall who? Hey. Hey. still like this. <laughs> like this. Hey. Like this. <laughs> like this. <laughs> like this. <laughs> well, where's the camera, man? One like this way, frog do like this. Hold on. Seven days. By the time they come separate them, frog stamp, Nyash don't go inside. Are we together? I just talk and make a doubt the tension. Madam, please go home. Hmm? Go home. Waiting don't happen, don't happen. Me, wait day here. Go soon die too. Everybody go die. You understand? Me where they here, I no get guarantee say if I die, my siblings no go fight my wife. You get family where you no go fit satisfy. No matter how you kill yourself for them. They go get one devil where even if other ones don't they like you, you go poison their minds. Yeah. Relax, God is in control. Yes, sir. I'm sorry. Am I talking to you, madam? Talk to me, talk to me. Am I talking to you? Yes, sir. Am I communicating? Yes, sir. Effectively? Yes, sir. Are you feeling me? Yes, Let's appreciate her and you can go now. Thank you. Thank you. You can go.